sorry, this was in the 70s where, you know, uh, evil was there, but even the devil's heard believed in Jesus and said prayers and all that. Today, you know, what, 40, 50 years later, you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but wow, what it's like. Some of the stuff coming up today, you know, is like incredible. So God was more prevalent. I mean, there's a lot more Christians today, okay? There, the, the, as you know, the Bible says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yes, sir. And we are living in the last days. But it also says evil, uh, evil will abound, and there's much evil in the world. Back then, there wasn't that much, uh, you know, the morality was still morality. I mean, there weren't guys, you know, cutting off things, being girls. And, you know, we call, well, back then they were something mentally wrong. You know, and today laws are being passed that it's okay. Da, da, da. So uh, even back then, you know, riding with the devil's disciples was a lot <clears throat> more morale and more God and, than there is today. Wow. So how do you, you were raised, you said Assemblies of God, AG. How did yes. you find yourself connected with the devil's disciples? Well, you know, I... I have a lot of mentors and uh, I guess you'd call them psychologists and <clears throat> through my life, you know, my father beat me very, very bad. I had two sisters and he'd say, pull down your pants, get over the couch from way young, three, four years old that I can remember. Wow. And, uh, you know, Bruce, he didn't use a belt, he used a board. And my thighs, the back of my thighs, he wouldn't hit my buttocks. He would hit the back of my thighs and they were so, I mean, they were, they were whelps. We showered in school back then. I wouldn't even shower in school. So kids tease me about, you know, being dirty. I mean, so, uh, I believe that, you know, and I, I don't need a psychiatrist or, or, uh, a pastor to tell me that the authority that he had, <clears throat> I ran away 16 times wanted by the cops. And the authority that he had, I just hated cops. I hated anybody with authority. You know, one time I turned him into my vice president, my vice principal at school. My vice principal called my dad down there. And then the vice principal stuck up for my dad and said, yeah, spare the rod or, or yeah, spare the rod, spoil the child. And so I, a lot of people say, well, if your dad wouldn't have beat you like that, you wouldn't be the man you are today. Well, I tell them, you know what? I'd have been ahead of the FBI. Mm. I guarantee you, because I'm a law, I, I love law enforcement. So the beatings that I took like that, you know, turned me away. They turned me away. And then as I got older, I left at 13, 14. I stayed away from God because I thought God was so busy in Vietnam I'm busy with all these other things that, you know, I knew he loved me, beyond, you know, and I loved him, but I thought he had one eye closed, you know, and I always thought just before I pass away or whatever, die, I'll ask God to forgive me. And once uh, I was shot right in the top of the skull with a 22 pistol from, I showed the guy the gun and he's like, this is where pow shot me. And I went to the hospital, got a couple stitches and I was driving back home and I thought I could hear God say, I thought you were going to ask me to forgive you of your sins. And I went, whoa, God forgot all about it. And then still I didn't, still I didn't, still I didn't. And, you know, I've been called, I've had a, uh, I don't want to say a preacher, but an evangelist call in my life ever since I was a kid, you know, nine, 10 years old. I used to testify in church and I knew that God was calling me to the pulpit. I knew that for sure. And finally, you know, after the TV show, I was a little lukewarm. And finally, after Beth passed away five years ago in June, then a year or so later, I asked God, listen, man, I need a Holy Ghost filled woman. I don't care what I, God, could I have one a little taller and thinner? Could I, you know, please, God, I need, you know, where I, uh, Lord, I got to go back to bikers. 
you know, I got to be in, there's called the dirty dozen. You've been, you know, only certain guys convicted of murder could go there. And so I said, please, I, you know, I want to serve the Lord. I want to see my mother. I want to see all my grandpas and grandmas, the ones that went before. Please, God, I need, I got to have, you know, a partner. I can't find my car coming out of Target. I can't, you know, I just have been married. Like I've had girlfriends at 15 and, you know, I need a mate. I need, you know, I read the Bible. Adam had a, a partner, a mate. I said, you know, I can't be single and I can't do that. Please, God. I'll, and if you give me, Lord, a mate that as loves God, I will serve you so much that you're going to freak out. And so thus I met my Francie and, uh, you know, together we're speaking across the United States and coming to a town near you. And her testimony is like, I thought mine was, you know, let a God. Well, I'm glad I get to do this show and you guys don't get to hear hers. You X me right out.